Welcome back to Crime Watch. Corruption is a crime, but how easy or difficult is it to prosecute? We are joined by the Executive Director of Corruption Watch, uh, David Lewis, and from Cape Town, another David, uh, forensic scientist, Dr. David Klasso. Uh, David uh, Lewis, nice seeing you. Uh, you too, yes. Corruption, corruption, and more corruption. Um, we're seeing it uh, on television day in and day out, uh, a very worrying trend indeed. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's now already a, a long-term trend, and it is very disturbing. You know, this, year, this week, the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index was released, which has us 73 out of uh, about 180 countries, but it has us our score in that category of countries that are deemed to have a serious corruption problem, which I don't think will come as news to anyone in this country. You know, I think that recently there have been signs, strong signs from government that the new administration or the Ramaphosa administration is taking much more seriously the need to tackle corruption. But, uh, you know, in the last nine years, some critical institutions have suffered really mm. very, very grievous damage, and they're critical institutions in fighting corruption. Well, uh, Dr. David Kletso, uh, in our Cape Town studio, how easy or how difficult is it to prosecute our law enforcement agencies, uh, Dr. Kletso, doing their jobs? Well, I think you've got to start off by realizing that whatever technical advances we've made in the fight against corruption, nothing will do anything until we have the will to prosecute. And while the actual agencies, such as the National Prosecuting Authority and the police and others who should be fighting corruption are not doing it, in fact, are protecting the corrupt, we are not going to get anywhere. And until we start to make it clear that corruption will lead to people being put in yellow and little orange jumpsuits and done so promptly and not being allowed to walk around and make use of their ill-gotten gains, then we will make a start for dealing with corruption. Well, Dr. Kletso, then, Dr. Kletso, let's look at it. When we talk of corruption, very often we talk of the public sector of politicians, but we know uh, it's no secret that corruption within the private sector is also uh, very, very rife. Um, how easy is it to, to follow the money trail? Um, what do we do? Lifestyle audits? Uh, do you need faster prosecution? Better law enforcement? What do you need? Well, for instance, you need to start off by asking how it is that a major accountancy firm such as KPMG could miss all the signs of the corrupt practices that were going on, how they could in fact become involved in it. And one needs to ask the question as to uh, how the prisons, how the police, how the forensic services, how all of these people are now enmeshed in corrupt allegations and nothing is done about it nobody is locking anybody up they are wandering around Richard and Bluely is still walking around uh, David Lewis uh, let me bring you in here uh, are we wasting time is law enforcement wasting time or is there a process to be followed we just have to be patient what do you think you know I don't think it's a question of law enforcement wasting time you know we speak about state capture mm. the first institutions to be captured uh, were the law enforcement authorities, including the NPA, the Hawks, and the mm. NPA. Um, if, you know, famously, you know, one of Zuma's, the Zuma administration's first acts was to disband the Scorpions, which, you know, shortcomings and all had been an effective uh, agency. Is the Hawks not effective? The, no, they haven't been effective, and they haven't been effective because they've been captured effectively, and the manner in which they were captured is by the president controlling his prerogative or else very strong influence to appoint the leadership of those institutions. I mean, within, I think it was two months of Zuma being elected and Dluli had been appointed head of crime intelligence. He, he filled the vacancy in crime intelligence before he even appointed a new commissioner. We've had a series of uh, commissioners of police, mm. uh, many of whom have left office because of uh, corruption allegations and sometimes 
uh, proven corruption, as famously in the case of... Well, you, you, well, well David Lewis, sorry to interrupt you, but you speak of, of the Hawks. I mean, Herman Mashaba, the executive mayor of Johannesburg, just this week had a meeting with the head of the Hawks where he says, and he's begging them to say, we've got uh, 24 billion rand lost to the city of Johannesburg, the Hawks are not prosecuting, uh, and now only they say that uh, they've assured him that they will prosecute. So there's really no action. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's right. But, and a new leader of the Hawks has been appointed, mm. and I think, you know, he comes with a very good reputation. Sure. But he's also been appointed to head uh, an organization that is clearly and, and for a long time infected by corruption. So, you know, we are dealing with institutions that, as I say, were the first institutions to be captured. And, and uh, their captors guarded their captives in the criminal justice system more carefully than they did any other agency. It was that that gave them the ability to run riot over the places where the money was, ESCOM, Transnet, uh, key government departments, because the key institutions of accountability, particularly the law enforcement authorities, but also institutions like uh, SARS, um, were uh, eff effectively neutered. Mm. And so we're not dealing with a, a group of people who are just lazy. We're dealing with a, with a group of people where, at best, the morale has been really destroyed by these long years of capture. At worst, who are not on the side of the new dawn, as it were, of the new initiatives that are, and the new leadership of each of those institutions. So both the leaders of those institutions have a real uphill struggle. Dr. Kletso, commercial crime, how do we follow the evidence? What evidence is needed to have successful prosecutions? A lot of work has to go into it, not so? It needs to go into it. But we now have very advanced electronic surveillance we have the ability to generate paper trails which will link the accused to the crimes far better than we've ever been able to do. Uh, these are methods that should be used and are not being used because they're being blocked at the actual prosecution level. The police are not doing it. In fact, the police spend more time fighting each other and fighting IPAD than they do fighting crime. Now. Very often we see that those implicated, um, those that receive the bribes uh, are prosecuted and perhaps convicted, but those that uh, on the other end uh, that are paying the money um, just get away scot-free. Surely we, this, this, it takes two people and more to have a corrupt relationship, uh, David Kletzer? Well, of course it did. I mean, and, and it started off right at the very onset when Zuma was being charged with various things and the corruption that went with him and Sheikh was proved in a court of law and Sheikh was put inside jail and got out very quickly due to a corrupt person who declared him to be medically unfit about to die he appears to be sick of only one thing and that was being locked up there's nothing wrong with Sheikh why is he out why is the person who declared him to be uh, so ill, why is that person not prosecuted? Mm. David Lewis, uh, whistleblower immunity, does it work? Does it exist? Yes, I think it does work. You know, I, I have a previous experience with the competition authorities where, and there you have a, a variant of corruption in, in price fixing. And the difficulty is that these are all secret by definition, clandestine transactions. And there's not a victim, there's not a body, there's mm. not a stolen car. There is an arrangement between two people, often one from the private sector, the other from the public sector. If there is nobody who's going to blow the whistle, and in rare cases, it may be an innocent third party who blows the whistle. In most cases, particularly grand corruption cases, it's one of those complicit mm. in corruption who blows the whistle. We've seen it at the Zondo Commission in the last, uh, in the last week, week or two, very sensationally. And so, although I know the public don't like the idea of people who have been complicit in corruption getting off uh, either scot-free or with a lighter sentence than they otherwise should have gotten, if that person is willing to cooperate with the prosecuting authorities and if he is going to implicate a bigger fish, then uh, for all of us it's worth 
granting mm. that immunity. Uh, and it's w effectively one of the only paths in which uh, corruption case, along which corruption Well, case. interestingly, yeah. I asked the question on social media, uh, do you think that law enforcement agencies take far too long to prosecute? 98% of the respondents said yes. And, and also on that note, uh, yesterday in Parliament, some figures were released. Only 135 convictions were secured out of almost 2,000 cases of suspected corruption reported to the police over the past four years. Uh, out of those, uh, the figures show that, what, only 370 convictions took place. So we have a real problem. Um, David Clatso in Cape Town, um, the whole perception that government is acting, you say, is not working. Uh, what needs to be done? Um, arrest them immediately um, or just give them more time to continue and to perhaps destroy some of the evidence, um, especially, for example, some of the commissions of inquiries. What do we do? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to beef up the National Prosecuting Authority. You need to put people in there who will prosecute without fear or favor. The second thing is that you need to make certain that there are people brought to book immediately and visibly and publicly brought to book. We need to go back and revisit the, the, the issues like the shake issue, which is where not, not necessarily the, the matter started, but certainly one of the first visible examples of corruption. And we need to make certain that the people know that if you're going to be corrupt, <clears throat> you're going to be caught and you're going to be prosecuted, and you're going to be prosecuted within a very short space of time and locked up. <clears throat> David uh, Lewis, uh, should we be patient? Well, I think we have little choice to, but to be, but people are not going to be patient. I mean, I think if by next year, this time, when the survey that I referred to earlier is released, if there have not been visible prosecutions, then we are going to plummet even further in that rank. By when, uh, David? By next year, this time. I mean, we have this year's survey released yesterday. In the next six months, there, have to be visible, there has to be visible evidence of prosecution. Uh, like it or not, and I have no fault with it at all, I think that people have begun to view prosecution as the litmus test. Mm. Uh, to establish go whether government is serious or not about tackling corruption. Obviously, prosecutorial decisions are not decisions of the government, and they must never be decisions of the government. In fact, the problem with the last regime is precisely that they interfered in prosecutorial decisions. But the prosecutorial authorities have to prosecute some of the low-hanging fruit. And there are some very, very big figures in the low-hanging fruit, just on the basis of the evidence before the Zondo Commission. The yeah, last big, big names are coming out. Big names in the public sector and the private sector. Very and quickly, David possible. Lewis, we're out of time. Uh, do we in South Africa have the forensic abilities, the skills to deal with corruption? Uh, Dr. Kletso, yes or no? Uh, it is rapidly being diluted to the point where it's becoming ineffective. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Dr. David Kletso in our Cape Town studio. We'll be asking David Lewis after the break uh, also what the message he has for ordinary citizens and how they should blow the whistle on crime. Also after the break, we ask the police to update us on airport followings from O.R. Tambo International in Johannesburg.